Hi, I'm Amber of The Little Research House where we celebrate the joy found in the little things of our family and our home. We have been participating in the Fall 2021 One Room Challenge over the past few weeks where we have committed to completing one single room in our home over the course of two months. If you have never heard of the One Room Challenge before, I will leave a link to it down in the description below as well as up in the cards I will link our introduction video where we introduced our own One Room Challenge room which is our dining room. Today I am going to bring you along as I tackle the biggest sub project within our greater room project and that is building a built-in bench with a wall feature in the back corner of our dining room. Along the back wall of this space we have the only window in the room as well as a very interesting bulkhead and column combination. That's something we weren't able to take out at this point, maybe down the road if we do more extensive renovations, we'll think about doing that. But for now, I decided I was going to try and work with it and make it a little bit more of a feature rather than trying to hide it. And so a built-in bench with a wall feature just felt like the perfect opportunity to turn this little nook into something that was really cozy, but also really functional. In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how I tackle that. It involves a lot of construction and processes I'm not super familiar with, which is the perfect project for me because I love learning and exploring and trying to do new things in our home. So I hope you'll join me. Let's get started. Before diving in, let me show you exactly what I have planned. I'd like to frame out the bench to tuck right into this little nook so we have ample room for seating and I'm hoping to add some sort of wall feature that goes partway up the wall to make this little area feel extra cozy and intentional. I'm going to paint the entire thing one consistent color and dress it up with lots of cozy throw pillows to make sure it feels inviting for all of our guests to enjoy. My first step was to remove the baseboard and hardwood flooring from the area the bench would sit. You can definitely build a bench right on top of your floors, but I decided to remove ours because I know that we are planning to replace some within the next few years anyways. This way, it'll be easy to just replace the floor up to the bench rather than cutting around it down the road. I used a multi-tool to cut the trim and pried it off with a pry bar. Once it was removed, I was able to accurately measure exactly where my bench would sit so I could cut through the flooring. I laid down painter's tape so I could draw a dark black line to follow as well as to prevent any splintering. Thankfully, my cut ran parallel with the floorboards and landed right in the middle of a board so I didn't have to worry about hitting any nails with my saw. When cutting hardwood floors, there are a few things I have learned. First of all, you need to set your saw blade so it's just a hair taller than the depth of your floorboard so it doesn't also cut through the subfloor. And second of all, you need to be confident when plunging through to make your cut. I used a circular saw so I had to plunge into the floor and follow my line as best as I could, getting as close to the walls as possible. I had to use a multi-tool to cut through the last few inches where my circular saw couldn't reach. I was then able to pry up the floorboards to make room for the bench frame. Once the floor was removed, I was able to really accurately plan out how I would build the frame. I referenced a tutorial from HGTV that I will link in the description below to base my drawings around, but I really had to customize it extensively to fit the space I wanted to fill. I framed the main portion of the bench that sat between the columns first, and then filled in the two areas on either side as separate boxes. I decided to make my bench have a few extra inches of depth than what is recommended for comfortable seating because it will sit under the window and I didn't want whoever was sitting on it to have the window covering touch the back of their head. Also, I want to add some comfortable throw cushions for behind your back so the few extra inches felt important to mention. I started with the bottom and then built the frame up to my desired height, being diligent about checking that everything was both square and level. I need to mention that after putting the frame together, I ended up disassembling it and removing a couple of inches off the height. Once I had it built and I double checked my table height, it just felt a little bit too tall. This was discouraging in the moment, but 100% worth the effort to backtrack a little bit now so I could make sure it was done correctly. I filled the little side pieces after the main portion of the frame was built, but this time to ensure that they were level with the main frame, I built them from the top down. I fastened the entire frame to various studs in the wall to ensure it was extra solid and secure. 
With the frame built, it was time to face it with plywood. I used 3 quarter inch plywood to face the front of the unit. I cut the pieces to size and used brad nails to attach them to the frame. We have an air vent that comes up beneath the bench, so we had to address that and direct the venting out the front of the bench instead. I decided to figure that out before attaching the second piece of plywood to the front just in case I needed to make any additional cuts. I'm definitely not going to pretend like I know how to explain this venting situation. I had an idea about what needed to be done, but essentially I just had to hit the hardware store and look at the pieces available to see how I could make it work. Long story short, I extended the ductwork through the interior of my bench so it could direct out the front and made sure to seal any cracks between the pieces I used with a special duct tape. With the ductwork figured out, I fastened the plywood to the front and continued on to the glamorous parts of the project. I wanted to add some trim detail to the front of the bench, so I cut out some additional bits of the surrounding baseboard to account for the trim. I used a simple square-shaped 3.5 inch baseboard to do this. I attached it with glue and brad nails and was very intentional about spacing the pieces out evenly. The middle piece directly covered the seam where the two pieces of plywood on the front of my bench met. With the front of the bench finished, I finally had an accurate measurement for the depth, which influenced the depth of my bench top. I used 3 quarter inch plywood for the top of the bench as well and started by creating a 2 inch strip to sit stationary along the back of the bench. Next I created my lid piece to fit well within the two columns. I attached the two pieces together using the 72 inch continuous hinge before putting them in place. The continuous hinge required a lot of pre-drilling and many tiny little screws but it will distribute the weight of the lid and make it really easy to use. Once the stationary back piece and the lid piece were attached together, I put them into place on the bench top. With those pieces figured out, I was able to fill in the stationary bench top pieces that sat on either side of the openable lid. To finish off the bench top, I used edge banding to cover the exposed plywood edges. I used an iron to adhere it to the edges and eventually sanded it smooth with the plywood. Once the bench was fully constructed, it was time to fill the many nail holes and cracks between the pieces for a very smooth finish, and I sanded it down with a fine grit sandpaper. Finally, the bench was built, and it was time to move on to the surrounding wall feature. I settled on a V-grooved knotty pine. I determined the height, which ended up going about two-thirds of the way up the height of the window, and began working away. I started with the first piece and made sure it was perfectly vertically level before working my way along the wall. I used some glue on the back of each board and attached them with brad nails going in on an angle. I checked that each board was level every time I added a new one, and once I got into a rhythm, they went up pretty quickly. I added horizontal pieces of the same 3.5 inch trim that's on the bench front to the tops of these boards to just give them a really clean finished look and filled and sanded everything. Since these boards have tons of knots and my bench was made up of a variety of different materials, I opted to prime everything with two coats of my favorite primer. I use the Zinser Bin Shellac Base Primer because the shellac locks in the wood tannins from bare wood and it will prevent them from bleeding through to the paint finish. I evened out all of my various surfaces so the paint will take to all of these pieces of the bench in the same way. It'll be a little bit smelly but it dries really quickly and then the fumes are non-existent. With everything primed I felt like I could see a little more clearly so I then went in with caulking and caulked all the cracks around the window, around the trim work, against the walls. The primed surface just really helps to show those off so you can fill them in easily before painting. The final step was paint. I decided to use Benjamin Mora's Advanced line because this is a very durable paint that's going to hold up very well to wear and so it's going to be perfect for this high traffic area. I settled on a popular Benjamin Moore paint color, Revere Pewter. We use this color on our fireplace mantle which is part of this space and so it felt like a very natural continuation and a way to bring some harmony between our living and dining space. Let's take a look at what this space looked like before. And here it is now.
this built-in was exactly what this room needed. It brings a focus to the room, but also makes it feel really cozy and inviting. I love that we can fit lots of people on here, as well as use the interior for storage. We have a few things to do to wrap this one room challenge room up, but you can watch for the reveal video coming later next week where we'll bring in all the finishing details. I really hope you enjoyed seeing that process. If you liked today's video, make sure you like it. Just know that every like, comment, share, subscribe, it goes such a long way in helping us on our YouTube journey. And if you wanna see more, you can find us on our blog at littlereaserhouse.com or like I said, subscribe right here on YouTube and you'll be notified whenever we put out new content. We appreciate you and hope you remember that the best things in life are often the little things like challenging yourself to learn a new construction skill in order to bring your cozy home dreams to life. Bye friends.